what's up guys okay so this is a video i've wanted to do for a long time um i've been busy in the professional it world learning how to use puppet for infrastructure as code in my work environment and uh, one of the things i needed to do in that environment was manage windows firewall rules using puppet and so uh, traditionally what we've done is managing firewall rules using group policy but now we're trying to move everything into the puppet space and we'd like to manage firewall rules with puppet instead and so there was a uh, um, a couple different modules you can use for this in the Puppet space. If you go and you search Puppet Forge for modules for Windows Firewall, you'll find a handful of them. Many of them are pretty old. Um, I don't know if that one applies. I don't know why I just scrolled down to that. But like you see this one here, it's seven years old. You see this one's three years old. Um, I wouldn't recommend using either one of those. That's too old for me. This one talks about Server 2008. It's useless. Um, so there are really two, I think, that you can pick from. One's by Puppet. And it hasn't been updated in over a year, but it does have a lot of downloads. Um, and then there's another one by Jeff Williams, The Mandalorian. And um, it's been updated three months ago, which is nice. It has a smaller amount of downloads, but it does have a good quality score. And I guess it's got some additional tags here, one of them being that it's compatible with the Puppet Deploy uh, Development Kit. So I'm not really quite sure exactly what that means. I mean, it kind of talks a little bit about it, but it's kind of nice. I guess it has a little badge there. Maybe that means it's better. I don't know. Yeah, validation and testing. So anyhow, but um, I picked it because I believe the documentation for that one was also better. If you so you look at the documentation for this one, um, it wasn't very thorough. Plus, it had limitations, and it said the module is tested on the following platforms. Well, as you guys know, that Windows 2008 R2 is gone. Well, I mean, it's probably still out there, but it's not supported anymore. And um, it really had, look at the release date of this is... is um, yeah, I mean, shoot, that's coming up on two years ago. And so I thought, well, I'm going to go with this one by Jeff Williams. So this is the one that I'm going to use, and I'm going to show you guys in this video on how I implement it. So the basic idea that I wanted for um, my firewall rules was to be able to do a layered approach for the firewall rules. And so um, basically what I wanted to do, and let me explain this graphic that's right here. And so essentially what I want is I want, I want to be able to have host-specific firewall rules that apply to just a host, and I want role-specific firewall rules that would apply to a specific role that the server might have. An example would be certificate authority or Active Directory um, domain controller. And then I want common firewall rules that literally will apply to 100% or close to 100% of my Windows uh, server environment. So this is going to have your basic ones like, do I allow ping in my, in my uh, data center? Yes, I allow ping to my servers. The one-offs for that might be something a host-specific, and I'll talk about... Um, um, What's it called? Knocking that off, I think, is what it's called in the in the merge statement. But basically, you can put host-specific rules here that would knock off a common rule down here. But the idea is that I wanted to be able to take all three of these and not just have unique... Like, these rules here could be a couple, and this could be an additional, like, 15, and then this could be, like, nine different rules. I want to take all those rules. So 1 plus 15 plus 9. I think those are the numbers I used, right? I think so. So that's 25. So down here, I wanted a 25 applied firewall rules. That's the structure that I wanted to be able to do so that I could have a, a layered approach to the firewall rules so that I don't have to manage rules individually per host or things or um, have the same common rules applied to everybody. And if I wanted to change a common rule, I have to go to every single one of these hosts and modify that, right? So I just want one spot to be able to change that. So that's basically the approach that I'm trying to take here. And I'll show you how I accomplish this. Uh, so the first thing you want to do, though, is you want to be able to add this mod. If you've never added a mod before, um, it's actually fairly easy if you're using Puppet Enterprise and you're using R10K. You just add this to your Puppet file, mod, and the version. So I can show you that right here. Scroll down to the Puppet file, and you can see I added it right there. Jeff Williams, Windows Firewall, version 5, 0 0.5.0. And that adds the mod so that you can start using the resources that come with the mod and managing the firewall. So let me pull back up my thing here. Okay, so um, so the first thing we want to do, though, is I want to show you um, the various firewall rules on a Windows box. So let's go over to that. This is a Windows server here that's going to be used as a domain controller. And you can see these are the default rules that come with Windows. And the way I'm going to manage the firewall um, rules using Puppet is that it's going to delete all of these and manage explicitly the ones that I want only. So I'm not going to enable or disable these. I'm literally going to remove them all. And the reason I want to do that is because I think this is kind of messy. Like, if you want to just use the cookie cutter rules, this is great. This will work for you. My problem with it is that a lot of these rules, um, one, they 
a lot i think it feels like a lot of them overlap two of them i don't even know what they are like all join router what do i need an all join router for that's that's crazy that that's a firewall rule on default windows server i don't i don't personally know what that is but it doesn't sound like something i would want dial protocol server cortana i don't want cortana on my server like what is that so basically, um, I wanted to show you that. So these are called individual rules, and you can see the names are all individual. And then there's groups, and the groups kind of wrap up these individual rules into one large collection. And using this, this firewall um, module by Jeff, you can actually manage the groups if you'd like. Oops. So if you go and you can just say, hey, I want to enable this group, or I want to enable that group, et cetera, you can do that. That's, that's also a possibility, but I'm not going to use that function. Um, I can show you the code real quick on what it looks like. Um, it's very similar to just doing the individual firewall rules. The only difference would be instead of saying the individual name, you're referencing the group. And the group has to exist, right? So if I delete all these firewall rules, then all these groups disappear. So there's there's really none left at that point. So um, so let's get let's get on with it here. Um, let me pull up my my notes because I'm going to get sidetracked. Uh, yeah, so what I wanted to show you was um, before you start ma managing the rules on a Windows server, especially if you're starting this project, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take and export essentially these rules into um, um, a data file. Let me show you that real quick. We can do puppet resource windows firewall rule, I believe. I had to spell firewall correctly. That should work. Assuming I got the mod installed still. We may not. I might have to run Puppet once to get the mod um, installed on this box, but we'll find out. Give it a second. Patience, patience, patience. It's kind of everything's taking a while. There we go. Okay. So basically, you would want to take these. So these are the rules. These are literally what you see here in the graphics space. This is the, the representation of that in a resource literally a manifest resource, resource output. You could literally copy the, and paste this into a manifest and these should work. Um, they have a lot of redundant data like ensure present, allow, action allow, uh, description's obviously not. Direction is gonna either be inbound or outbound. Um, in my particular case, I don't worry about outbound rules and I'll show you that in a second. So the outbound rules don't mean anything to me personally. I don't have an egress firewall setting for Windows servers. And so basically the reason I'm mentioning this is so that you can go back and reference this in case after you say fully manage these rules, you're going to go, oh, shoot, I don't remember which rules were in there. What do they look like? Which ones am I missing? If you exported this list by doing something, not export, but I guess it's kind of like an export, right? I'm going to say, save it to an output file. So if we say temp output uh, firewall dot text and run that again, it'll output all the all that content into a text file that you can reference later because we're literally going to delete these. Um, another interesting thing here is for various services that you might add. So if it's a domain controller, the first time you do domain controllers, you can actually um, install the domain controller role and then run this puppet resource Windows firewall rule. and It'll show you all the rules that are added when you added the domain controller. They'll just get put into this list. And so what I did was I outputted it like this. I output it just like I showed you. Then I installed the role and I output it again. And then I put it into a text compare product like WinMerge. And I looked at the differences for the rules on which rule was added based off of Active Directory. So now that you have the, a basic idea of the rules you might want to add back in, um, the next thing you're going to want to do is um, make some uh, code and configuration for the, the module itself. So um, I made it on the manifest for a profile, class profile Windows firewall. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define the profile settings. And see, so these are like generic settings that you apply to the firewall. The one, one of the ones of importance for me was one, the log, and then two, like log dropped connections, not log, don't log allowed, uh, and then max log si uh, size, and then is the state on or off. And the firewall policy specifically is block inbound, right? So basically it's an, a block all for inbound and allow all for outbound. So unless you have an explicit deny for outbound, I believe um, it just lets everything out. And unless you have an explicit allow in, it blocks everything external. And that's that's the set the setting I used for literally every one of the three um, firewall profiles that you can have in Windows environment, domain, private, and public. Public is um, if your computer thinks that it's on a network that's not internal, it switches to, to public, which is a should be a firewall setting that's basically the, um, don't allow anything at all, like block all connections, literally everything. Private might be a little bit more 
um, permissive, like maybe allow ping and stuff like that. And then domain obviously could be potentially even more permissive. I, I don't know. These are probably pretty similar in like a um, class level. Like this is like note a zero trust and these might be like a 10 trust type of a thing or something like that. But what I'm going to do is because these are Windows servers, they're never leaving my data center. I'm going to change the firewall settings for all three of them. And the reason I'm doing that is because sometimes Windows gets a little confused. Um, it doesn't happen very often. And actually in my servers, it has, I don't think it's ever happened, but it has happened in lab environments and stuff where for some reason it decides that it is a private network, even though it's domain joined, like I, how it gets confused, I don't know. But I don't want my firewall to, rules to change based off of the profile. I want them all to be the same, the same restriction. Again, they don't leave the building. Don't apply these type of concepts to a client or a laptop that might actually hit Starbucks. My servers don't hit Starbucks, so they're never public. And the ones that are public, I'll pay very close attention to those anyway. So that's a different topic. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is, and so we set the default Windows firewall profile rules there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to say, Windows firewall rule purge is true. And basically this setting here, according to the documentation, means that we want this module to manage every single firewall rule in Windows. And so when it when you run this, it literally deletes all firewall rules that are not managed by the module itself. And so that would be all these. This entire list will be empty by the time it runs. Here's the interesting thing about this, is that if you're doing this on production systems, the order of events are delete, all these firewall rules, well, at least the order of events in my, my, my code here, is delete all the firewall rules. That includes RDP. That includes, like, if it's a domain controller, that means that includes DNS and Kerberos, N, and all these firewall rules that you'd be using in the meantime, right? And so you'll have this point where your server is basically uh, disconnected from the network in a way because the firewall has no inbound rules anymore, which means it's not allowing any connections incoming unless they were explicitly opened as an outgoing connection. And so it's basically just just going to turn off everything. So if you RDP, and I'll show you that, this RDP connection here will actually drop while it's doing this purge. And then it finally gets down and adds the individual rules, and the RDP session comes back alive once it gets down and adds the RDP rule. So um, so that's, this, that's what this does. And I, I like this concept because this means that the Puppet environment is fully, or the Windows firewall environment is fully managed by Puppet. Um, and that means that you can't have engineers, well, they can, but the, the firewall rules will get deleted afterwards, but you can't have engineers adding, you know, rules of their own because they logged into a server and they installed some web service and they want it open on port 81 and they added their own manual rule. Well, Puppet will go through and remove that rule the next time it runs. And so it kind of keeps people, um, um, you know, doing the right thing in the, in the environment. So, um, oh, the next thing I want to talk about was I had the group firewall rules. So basically... Uh, it's existing named groups in Windows Firewall, like I explained to you a second ago. It's these right here, this group column. But since we're managing all firewall rules and we're purging everything, I don't have any groups anymore. So this particular block of code I actually don't use. I do not define this um, this HIRA variable here, or hash. I don't put any data in it, so it doesn't do anything. So we'll kind of just skip over this. We'll move right into the custom rules for individual firewall rules. And so essentially what this is going to do is it's going to take and apply some default default um, attributes to each of these resources. Windows firewall rule is going to apply these defaults to every single one of those. And it's basically saying um, ensure present, actions allow, profile, the three of them like I explained earlier, the directions inbound, um, enabled is true, and interface type is any. So it means any of the interfaces, local address and remote address are both any, any. So by default, those are your default settings. Obviously, you'd want to add like port and other things in, in there as well. And that's what I'll show you in the HIRA data. Um, the next thing that we'll do here, so that's one variable. The next variable we're going to define is a lookup statement. The lookup statement, this is what, what actually works the magic for these multiple layers that I explained a second ago of the host, role, common, all applied together, merged. That entire piece is merged together. So. Um, if you've ever done, if you've never done a merge like this with a strategy deep, what would happen is if you didn't do this, it would basically, in effect, stop at the first layer that it finds this variable here. So if that higher variable exists and um, exists in host-specific rules, then it'll stop there and just use that one. If it doesn't exist here but it existed in role, it'll stop here and not use any of the other ones. And so um, 
that doesn't work for me because I need to be able to use, I need to be able to apply common and role together. I want you to add bo all the rules for both of these and apply them to the firewall. So we're doing a lookup, we're doing a merge strategy deep, which means it's going to merge all of these that it finds. So if it finds it in three different places and three different YAML files in your hybrid data, it's going to merge all of them together. The knockout prefix was what I was talking about. So if you do a dash dash in front of one of those in the hash, it will actually omit that one at, instead of adding it. So you can, it's like if you had a rule in common that you wanted for just one host, you didn't want it in that one host, you could put a knockout prefix in that host and it'll apply that. Um, and then obviously a default value, I don't have any default value. And then the next thing that happens is we're going to use this this puppet function called create resources and i actually pulled it up right here i believe i did not i don't know why i closed that dang it uh, i'll just explain it so puppet so puppet has this built-in function called create resources and essentially what this function is going to do is is it's going to go through my hash here and i'll show you the hybrid data now and so this is my hash, and it's going, and I'll, I'll copy three of these, three of these out of the hash. So these are three different rules, common, allow R, a ping, allow RDP, and, and common IGMP. So now we'll go to, back to the manifest here. And what I want to do is I want to show you what this create resources is in effect as it's doing. It is going to be doing this for us. It's going to say, I want you to create a resource called Windows Firewall Rule. And um, I always forget how to type these for some reason. There it is. You want to say that, and I want to name this, uh, um, I'll just copy paste these, so I'm going to cut that out and put that there. Um, obviously, this is going to be different, right? It's going to look more like this. We'll copy paste that in there. Because remember, these are default settings. So for every single one of these create resources, I'm using these default, these default attributes. And you can see that create resources takes and says, what's the resource going to be called? What are the, what's the resource data that I'm going to, or what's the data set that I'm going to create all these resources from? And then what are the, the default values I want you to apply to this resource if they're not inside of the um, hash? And so these are the default settings. And so basically every single one's going to get these. And then you'll have these guys added down like at, right here like this. And so obviously the format would have to match, right? It's, the format here is different between um, Hyra YAML and a manifest. But in, a, in essence, this is what it should look like. Let me see if I can copy this fast enough. And so essentially, create resources will go through this hash here. And it'll create a resource for this. It'll create a resource for that. It'll create a resource for that and that and that all the way down. So I don't have to manage a manifest file that has a bunch of individual create resource fire. Um, excuse me, Windows Firewall rule individual resources like this, I can use Hira data to do that for me. And that's what this create resources does. It's literally just loops through all the data in your hash, creates individual resources for them. And so I, I probably should have showed you basically what it would do is it would create another one, right? It's not going to just be one of these. This one's going to be the common allow RDP. It's going to have the default settings, just like the other one did. Right? Just like that. And then it's going to have... Uh, common allow. So then it's going to have these guys, which obviously I got to change the format. Well, you get the idea. And then it's going to create another one that's going to look like this. Oops, got rid of too many of those. Basically, just like that. And it'll have its default set, right? And so you can see if you had a bunch of firewall rules, just how tedious this would be to be managing manifests like that for firewall rules, right? Very, very um, difficult to manage. Plus, um, it's not, it's, uh, I guess actually with the structure, you could have, you could have like a common that gets a manifest file that gets common that's applied to all of them. And then you could have another manifest that targets just a node um, because you could, you could target up at the top instead of saying class, you could say node and specifically do a node. But I personally think that gets messy because one of the things also is that you'd have to type these in all of them individually, whereas in here I can say these are my default values. You create the resources for me based off of my data that I have in high risk. So it's a definitely a much better way to do it. So basically, um, that's basically how the code works. And uh, so these are the, this is the important piece, right? Just look at that one right there. And the important strategy is deep. 
for those. Let me show you. I've got a couple. I've got a node here. Uh, I didn't put anything in there, but for fun, I created a quick one here called that. And I'm going to say uh, an inbound rule to allow geek head traffic. Local ports 81. It has to be TCP. So you can see the name of this is the name of the hash, right? So I'm looking at a hash right now. Um, actually, I probably shouldn't have saved that, but that's okay. Looking at a hash right now, right? So I've got the firewall rule variable, hash variable, whatever you want to call it. And then it's got an individual entry with three array items inside. And then we've got a role. This Actually, this server we're going to apply this to is going to be a domain controller. And so it also has, this is literally the same name, and it has its set of rules, which I've pre, um, I'd have prefixed them all with AD underscore so that I know when I look at the rules, it'll say AD underscore DNS. This is actually the rule name that you'll see in Windows. So when I look at the Windows firewall here, I'll see those names there, AD time. ADL DAP, etc. So these are all the AD firewall rules that I found to be good in my lab environment. I haven't fully deployed this to production, so I'm not entirely sure which ones of these I might want to not have in production. But I do know that um, a lot of these. So most of these were these were compiled from a, a a export like I showed you with doing that puppet resource in the beginning. I showed you how to type this and, and output it to a text file, and then I also read some articles on Microsoft and. And that's where I, how I compiled this list here. Um, and then I also have the core ones. So this is the Windows. So if your OS is Windows, then you get all these basic ones, like allow ping, allow RDP. All right, so, so there's my firewall rules, right? And so what you should find on this particular node is I should have all the rules from here, all the rules from here, and all the rules from here all applied together. And so let's go ahead and see that. What we need to do next is um, actually enable the firewall manifest on the Windows role, and let's go ahead and stage all that and say um, enable firewall rules, and let's go run those now, and I'll show you what it looks like. Push. Can't believe we're already 22 minutes in. Okay, so let's run Puppet now. And what we should see is... Um, so I guess what I could have showed you as well, oops, is um, when I committed that code, I'm using Git, and Git's got a pipeline just now, and it it um, deployed that code to the Puppet environment. So that's why I immediately just went here and started working on um, running the Puppet agent. Okay, so as you can see, what I wanted to show you here was it applied, it's kind of hard to do this because it scrolls through, but it's, it applied my default settings there for the firewall itself. Remember how we talked about um, what kind of settings we wanted for um, logging of connectivity and my my policy of inbound allow in uh, allow outbound and block inbound and whatnot and then and now it's getting down to business and it's doing that next statement which was purge right purge all the rules and so it's essentially going through right now and deleting these rules and I can show you that by doing action uh, maybe not right click this and say refresh and you should see this scroll bar get a little bit smaller so you can or bigger rather so you can see it actually did delete some right it moved about a quarter inch um, it's obviously a lot of rules so it does take a decent amount of time and as I stated before when it gets down and it deletes the remote desktop this one right here likely the TCPN um, it's gonna kill this RDP session until it adds the RDP session back or the RDP rollback um, so this actually takes some time, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to resume the video really quick to show you that what this is what happened when it hit the firewall rule that deleted the RDP session. It went into, obviously, reconnecting because the connection had been lost. And so it's actually going to take a decent amount of time. It probably will time out before it comes back because I'm adding a ton of rules, and I'm still deleting the other rules. So, um, again, if this was a production environment, you'd have an issue where your computer... <clears throat> excuse me, your server is inaccessible during those rules. Oh, man, right as I finished that. So it's actually working pretty fast, but you can see that it, the common allow RDP was recreated, and now they're, now it's letting the RDP session back. Um, so I guess I guess a long time is an is a overstatement there, but it just depends on how fast your computer will go through and manage these firewall rules. Mine's actually doing it much faster than my lab environment at the office. Um, and so actually, it's getting close to the end here. There's not a whole lot of other rules that it's going to be um, managing, to be honest with you. Um, let's go ahead and right-click this and just do a refresh, and you can see all of them now. 
So these are all the rules that I was talking about, right? We've got the common ones that sit under the windows.yaml. We've got the AD ones here that sit under that ad-dc.yaml under roles. And, oh, oh, look, it just it's adding more, right? That's why that selection looked funny. I'm waiting for the last rule, uh, rule there, which was the geekhead one, right? And then I got my geekhead rule, which is applied to just the host itself. And so there you go. It literally did as I wanted it to do. It took and, let me minimize this. It took, and let me explain it again, and it took these rules that are under the Windows YAML as part of my Hira data. You can see per OS defaults there, so that's Windows. And then it took these this role here, the AD-DC role, which this particular role is right here in the Hira data, and it's it's um, classified by a node type. It's a actually a custom factor variable um, that I put in here. You can see that right here, node type. So basically it just says when the, this is a simple one but it basically says what's the host name and then if it equals labdc then you this particular factor val um, variable equals ad-dc and so that's where it got this from and applied those rules and then obviously the node one applies because that's the name of the node and then that's why it added just this specific geek head rule there I keep coming in here my bad and so that's it. That's basically what I wanted to show you guys. So that's managing Windows Firewall rules using um, the Jeff Williams mod from Puppet Forge. And I think it's a pretty good mod. It actually works quite well, in my opinion. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was beneficial to you. I'll put the YAML and the manifest code that I used in the description of the video so that you can copy this out if you want to use it in your own, your own code. And to be honest with you, this Create Resources function you can use all over the place not just for firewall rules you can use these hashes literally everywhere and use as create resources all over the place as an example um, one of the things that i also do is like um, installing windows features and you'll have a hash of all the windows features you want to install and you can say create resources and run puppet sh puppet excuse me powershell scripts based off of the code that you put in here and say and instead of windows firewall rule this would be a an exec resource like that so anyhow, hope that was beneficial, you guys, and thanks for watching. I have officially taken over this channel. It is now mine. I am ultimately superior to my dad. Yes. Mwahaha.